Now, my fear is that even if we have a moderate outbreak here in the U.S., we're going to need something like 200,000 intensive care beds. The U.S. only has 100,000 intensive care beds at any point in time. So we could easily overwhelm the healthcare system. So I am making this video in direct response to the coronavirus and the implications of me catching the virus. And this video is going to be about me doing some of the things to mitigate the chance of catching it. But if I do catch it, uh, how I might possibly survive. I have a history of very serious bacterial and viral infections. I've been hospitalized a number of times with the flu and also like strep type bacterial infections. So I'm uh, going, making full attempts to not get the virus, but if I do, I intend to take care of myself because going to the hospital at this point is probably a bad idea. Uh, yesterday the Dow Jones dropped 2,000 points. This is a global problem. Uh, it's not going to go away. The number of cases has gone up. A week ago it doubled in seven days. Uh, last week it multiplied by 10. So that's how a virus works is that it kind of goes up exponentially. So it's just gonna be a matter of time before millions of people have it. And some will survive and some won't. But I'm doing whatever I can to try. So this is a how-to video on how I'm going to make a ventilator out of an oxygen concentrator that somebody with COPD might use and also a BiPAP machine, which is something that people with sleep apnea might use. So let's get started. So I can't live in the cabin, so decided to live downstairs in the basement uh, because my wife continues to go to the store and to the church and whatever else. Uh, she's doing her best that she can to not get infected, but she, I don't think she's ever been sick by the flu, so she's not as concerned as I am, which is fine. But here's where I'm quarantining myself. So, that is the O2 generator right there. This is the BiPAP. And this little device is the oximeter. Again, this is a warning, warning, warning. Do not attempt this. This is just something I'm doing to help myself. So basically what I did here was very simple. I took the output from the O2 concentrator and just ran it through a small hose over here to the back of the BiPAP unit. Um, that's where the vent normally goes in, but I just stuck the tube in there for an experiment, and it worked quite well. They say that you want to be between 95 and 100% on the O2 levels. It's 95%. So now I'm going to do is hook up the machine and breathe out of it and see if that level goes up. 93 there. So it looked like the test was not inconclusive, but in the margin of error, I, I'm not sure exactly, but when I, when I f tested my blood oxygen level, it was 94, 95. Sometimes if I'm sitting still, it would get up to 96, 97, sometimes 98. So it, it does fluctuate when I put the BiPAP on, it did seem to go up. Um, when I stuck the oxygen tube in the BiPAP machine, it might have gone up one point, but again, it's a kind of a statistical thing. I did read on the directions for the BiPAP machine that it does take 10 minutes, or the uh, O2 generator does take 10 minutes to, 
to build up an O2 supply, so I'm not sure if that was the case. Earlier I did uh, let it run for a little bit, uh, probably a half an hour or so, and I was breathing, I turned up the flow rate, and I was breathing right out of that little plastic tube that you saw, and I was able to get a blood saturation level of 100%, so I'm pretty sure it's working. I bought it on uh, the marketplace, and I paid 275 for the oxygen concentrator, and then 300 for the BiPAP machine. Uh, they typically cost in the thousands of dollars range. Uh, the BiPAP you, I believe, have to have a prescription for, and also the oxygen generator. I the the doctor I did have was going to write me a prescription for the CPAP BiPAP uh, for sleep apnea, but I never got around to it because I didn't want to spend the money. And, Whatever, but in light of the coronavirus, I figure I need all the tricks in my uh, kit that I can. So uh, I think it's working. It definitely improves my oxygen level, hooking the breathing, the BiPAP up. I'm not sure if the oxygen level added anything to it or not, but I'll take it. This is my quarantine center. It's pretty nice. the stairs to the infection zone I call it the hot zone you notice here at the bottom of the steps or at the top of the steps I've got a bottle of formula 409 or spick and span and that kills 99% 99.9 of that bacterium viruses so if she were to come downstairs, she was just supposed to put a little on her hands and clean herself. So if I come upstairs at all, I don't really touch anything without using, uh, first clean my hands. I bring my own plates from downstairs, wash them downstairs. If I touch anything in the, the kitchen, I then clean my hands with spick and span and hot soapy water. Then this is where we enter the house. Uh, we also have a can of spick and span here, hand soap in the, uh, the uh, pantry room here, and then out outside if we go outside and she's not here in the back of her car she has a another bottle of spick and span in the back of the she has a small pickup truck so before she gets in her car if she goes outside she'll spray her hands with spick and span so that she uh, doesn't bring the infection into her car and then also <clears throat> when she gets home, she will then rinse her hands with a spick and span and then also spray the door handles right here so that if there were any germs on her hands, then we'll probably get it right here also. So it's kind of a triple uh, system. So before touching any of the handles, I always just get my hands uh, wet with spick and span. Then I come in here and wash my hands with hot soapy water. And then I go downstairs. So pretty much uh, clear of any transmission from upstairs to downstairs. In conclusion, clearly the virus is going to get a lot worse. The hospitals are going to get overrun. And people in higher risk categories such as myself will suffer the consequences of those. A couple of things, uh, I'm over 60, I'm 62. I'm 30 pounds overweight, so I'm 230, I should be 200, so I'm six feet tall. So it's uh, it's not obese, but it's, uh, it's overweight. <clears throat> uh, and I have a horrible history with viral and bacterial infections, so that puts me 
in a, a different risk category than most people. So that's why I'm going to these uh, attempts. Again, I want to stress that I would consult a physician before doing this. I've chosen to take this route uh, before uh, the hospitals and the ventilators run out, basically, is what's going to happen. These are a few of the things that I've done to try and help myself uh, survive through this uh, uh, pandemic that we're about to have. And uh, I really want to get back to making dump trucks, ATVs with front loaders, uh, fun things. So stay well and uh, we'll see you in the next video.